Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my Justice League trailer breakdown. They just did a big IGN fan fest, and Zack Snyder did a big panel talking all about the movie, some changes that he made, what his plans for the future were, had he gotten to do his Justice League sequels. So we'll break it all down. And there's also all the news about the new Superman movie that Warner Brothers is working on. So I'll explain what's going on with that at the end of the video, too. Getting a new Superman movie, probably not the one you expected, though. Be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'll be doing videos for the Snyder Cut when it drops. Obviously, it's four hours long, so there's going to be a lot of stuff to talk about because most of the movie will be brand new stuff that we've never seen before. But I'll just start with the footage, all the Easter eggs first, and what Zack Snyder said about this particular trailer. Then I'll explain all the other things he revealed about the movie during his big panel. The way he talked about this trailer, he called it the Mother Box Origins trailer because it sort of tells the origins of the Mother Box in the movie, the origins of the Snyderverse, and the origins for all the different characters in the way that they're portrayed on the different Mother Box panels. You also probably noticed that the song on the trailer is a little bit different. I had to change that just because of copyright, because it was a Tom Waits song and I don't have permission to use his music in my videos. The reason why he said he used that Tom Waits song in the trailer is mostly because it fit the style and mood of the Snyder Cut. But the trailer itself was made as a result of a bunch of doodles and ideas that he had for marketing the film that he worked with Warner Brothers on. But it starts with Cyborg's origin story. The wheel and the football helmet you see here just references the football game you see in the trailers and then the car accident after the fact that he gets into that winds up killing his mother and causes his father to experiment with the mother box turning him into Cyborg. We'll see all that happen during the actual Snyder Cut. All that footage was deleted from the theatrical cut. There's like a whole big story for Cyborg that we never got to see. And he's supposed to be the linchpin of the movie. He's sort of like the heart of the Snyder Cut. He's the one that brings the team together. So when they're referencing a lot of their origin stories, a lot of this stuff is happening during the events of Batman v Superman or just prior to the events of Batman v Superman, with a few exceptions for people like Wonder Woman, whose movie took place in the distant past. But then they go to Batman's origin story in another panel. You see Joe Chill's gun, his mother's pearls, their family's tomb, Wayne Manor, the bat signal, his very Frank Miller inspired bat suit from Batman v Superman. Then you go to the Flash's origin story, you see the Speed Force lightning arcing across the panels of the Mother Box till you get to Flash's panel. The clock behind him just representing time travel abilities, the Speed Force, Flashpoint. You see his mother's gravestone, Nora Allen here. The microscope just referencing his work as a forensic scientist at the Central City Police Department. You see a couple other worlds around the clock here just representing multiverse travel that they'll get into during the Flash movie. The way he talks about it, even though a lot of these characters he originated in his movies, which what he's calling the Snyderverse, all the movies that he's made inside the DC Universe, he considers his movies in the Snyder Cut in particular his own little bubble of continuity. So he doesn't really reference anything that's going to be in the Flash movie or things that were in Wonder Woman 1984. Like it doesn't really get into that because most of the movie was finished before before they ever started working on those other DC movies. He said that also includes the Aquaman movie because they didn't make that movie till after he'd pretty much finished filming all of his Justice League movie, even though they did have the additional photography. He talked about that too, so I'll explain. He explained why he added Joker to the movie. But then you go to another box in Aquaman's panel, the tentacles of the Carathen all around him, his mother's trident, the throne of Atlantis behind him too, because he is the future king of Atlantis at this point. He hasn't taken the throne when Justice League is happening yet. Then you go to a different panel, you get Superman's origin story, the Kent farm where he crashed, the Kryptonian world engine from Man of Steel. There's a lot of Man of Steel references on this. The school bus from the flashback scenes, the other worlds around him, and the red glow represent Krypton exploding in the path of his pod. Then you travel through the mother box to the other side and it all ends with Wonder Woman's origin. The gas mask from World War I, all the German World War I military drawings on the other side here. Steve Trevor's plane and the watch that he gave to her at the end of the movie. The monstrous looking head seems like it's Zack Snyder's depiction of Ares, even though they tuned him down quite a bit during the movie. The old timey camera just referencing the picture of her with her friends that shows up during the movies. And then her sword and armor and the chain around her. Then all three mother boxes coming together, combining into one like you see during the Justice League movie, just to unleash the anti-life equation or the unity or however he's going to explain it in the Snyder Cut. He didn't really clarify that part, I think just because he didn't want to give away spoilers. But they talk about the unity during the theatrical cut of Justice League, but obviously his movie is very different. And when he talked about Darkseid enslaving Superman and all the nightmare scenes, he made a lot of references to Darkseid using the anti-life equation to do that. So I don't know if we're going to see more Easter eggs for the anti-life equation 
equation in the Snyder Cut. But just getting into the stuff he revealed during the panel, it was pretty long. He revealed some really cool things. He said that even though the movie we're going to see is just a couple minutes beyond four hours, it's like four hours in a couple minutes with the titles, he said originally there was an even longer version out there before they started cutting it down to that four hour mark. He clarified that there were originally three Justice League movies that he wanted to make, which I think I've talked about in the past. Originally, it was three movies, then the studio turned it into two movies, and then eventually just the one movie. He said that Justice League 2 would basically be an entire movie set during the nightmare sequence, like a nightmare movie all by itself in the future after Darkseid has conquered the Earth. Then the third movie is when they eventually change everything and finally defeat Darkseid. I did a video a couple years ago after he revealed what the plan was for that three movie Justice League arc, but he said the way he sees it right now, the studio isn't interested in making his sequels never say never, so he just said, I'll believe it when I see it. He also said that there are chapters in the movie, and originally it was his idea to break the release into like four different episodes for the different chapters, but the main reason why they decided not to do that, not to release it in four different parts, is mostly for legal reasons, like lawyers just got in the way and it got really complicated, so he said, okay, it's just simpler to just drop it as one big four-hour movie. But the title of chapter one is Don't Count on It Batman, and it's about 40 minutes long. Then chapter two is called The Age of Heroes. He didn't say how long that is, but it's basically four chapters total. He talked about a cameo scene during the movie that's going to blow fans' minds some big deep cut. Even though he didn't reveal what that was, I believe he was talking about Martian Manhunter because Harry Lennox also Skyped in and asked him a bunch of Martian Manhunter questions for the fans. I mean, obviously he already knew it. It was mostly for the sake of the panel and the fans. Like, has Martian Manhunter been hiding out this whole time? So Zack Snyder explained that he's been pretending to be this general character that we first saw during Man of Steel, then Batman v Superman, and now during Justice League. And he was lying to Superman and Lois this whole time, sort of trying to push them in the right direction for the benefit of humanity. So it wasn't like he was trying to gaslight the world or anything like that. He was trying to influence things in a positive direction from behind the scenes. He said the movie ends on a massive cliffhanger, so that's probably going to be one of the first videos that I do for the movie, just explaining what's going on with the ending and what his plans were for the stuff that was going to happen after that. But a while ago, there were rumors that he swapped some of the Green Lantern stuff in the movie that he had thought about doing for the Martian Manhunter stuff. Like, instead of some Green Lantern stuff, there's Martian Manhunter stuff. But we'll see, because originally there was supposed to be a Green Lantern post credit scene, so I don't know what happened to that in the Snyder Cut. Hopefully it's still in there. He said the reason why he added Jared Leto Joker to the nightmare scenes in that alternate post-apocalyptic future are mostly to deliver on the promise of Batman and Joker's relationship in his Snyderverse, like this self-contained bubble of continuity. Ben Affleck's Batman and Jared Leto's Joker had never actually shared any scenes up to this point. They never had the opportunity. The way he talks about Deathstroke in the movie, too, also makes it sound like it's happening in this alternate nightmare scene future. He said that he and Batman, Deathstroke and Batman, have struck a deal in a partnership because there's a bigger enemy. I believe he was referencing Darkseid and Apocalypse. He also talked a little about the empty pod from Man of Steel. He said that it actually shows up again during the Justice League Snyder Cut, but he doesn't definitively answer the question of who was in the pod, although everybody believes that it's a version of Supergirl. Now, there is a brand new version of Supergirl that they just cast for the Flash movie, but the way he talked about the empty pod, he made it sound like whatever he was planning for that is completely different from what they're doing in the Flash movie. So whatever plans he had for Supergirl or this mystery figure, we won't see that happen in the Flash movie. He also said that the black and white version of the movie is called the Justice is Grey edition, and they're going to add that to HBO Max after they add the regular version at some point. Then once everyone's actually able to go to movie theaters again, he'll release the movies, both the editions, the black and white and the color version, in special IMAX theatrical releases. So you will, at some point, have a chance to see these in theaters. But just explaining what's going on with the new Superman movie announcement that they had this past week. So if you didn't see the news, Warner Brothers is developing, officially developing, a new Superman movie. But here's the catch. It's a totally different writer with J.J. Abrams. No big surprise there. I'd always assumed that he would be the person to produce a new Superman movie at Warner Brothers. But the rumor is, is that it's actually being developed as a Val Zod or a Calvin Harris Superman movie. So if you don't know who those characters are, they're two different characters, but they're basically multiverse versions of Superman. It wouldn't be Henry Cavill Superman. So the rumor is, is that he might be out, but Warner Brothers hasn't said anything about it. They might also be doing it as a multiverse movie and reference his Superman in some way, or he might get a cameo scene because earlier last year all the news outlets were reporting that he was working on a deal to cameo in the other upcoming movies like Superman versus Black Adam or Superman in Shazam 2. 
So it does sound like we will see more of Henry Cavill's Superman, just not in the way you expected. But if you spotted any other Easter eggs in this trailer video that I didn't mention in the video or in the big panel that he did that I didn't talk about, just write them below in the comments and post your reactions about the new Superman movie news. My WandaVision finale video is going to post next Friday, but I'll be doing some bonus videos for it before then. Falcon and Winter Soldier episodes are starting real soon. I'll be doing videos for all those as well. While you wait for everything, click here for my brand new WandaVision episode 9 finale trailer and post credit scene video. And click here for that brand new Spider-Man 3 No Way Home teaser trailer video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys tonight.